Hey guys, this is Shaw from worshipguitarskills.com and if you are new to playing electric guitar in a worship team, I'd like to give you a couple of tips in this video as it relates to becoming a better rhythm guitar player. There's many different roles that the electric guitar can play, but one of the main things that the electric guitar does really, really well is the ability to add drive and you know forward moving momentum to the actual playing and you'd be able to do that by doing specific rhythmic things as well as adding to the harmonic context, meaning that you're playing actual notes. So for example, a drummer, they are amazing. If you have a drummer that you know can play well and that can really um, add dynamics and really just drive a song forward with an amazing groove, that's fantastic. We, we always need those kind of drummers. But one thing that, you know, that is not available to them is the harmonic side. So as a guitarist, yes, we don't have the full range of the rhythmic capability that a drummer can do, but we can play rhythm on the guitar, you know, these strings, very percussive sounding, and we can add accents, and then we can also add in the actual harmonic context. So with all that said, I'm going to show you how you can play eighth note, a basic eighth note rhythm with all down strokes, but in the way that you can add certain accents that's going to make the, uh, the planks uh, stand out from the mix because it's going to be a confident rhythm, rhythmic pattern, but you are going to be able to add very specific accents to bring that rhythmic part to life. And we call that rhythmic interest. All right, so that's enough talking. Let me go ahead and demonstrate to you what I can do with these rhythmic patterns. So that was a simple four chord progression D, A over C sharp, E, F sharp minor. Now I didn't even play it as a minor, I just played all power chords. And let me show you those chord shapes first of all if you want to learn them. Here we go D5, 5 on the A, 7 on the D. Then 4 on the A, 7 on the D. 7 on the A, 9 on the D. And then I move that two frets higher. And then I took that an octave higher, which is I played the exact same shapes, I just played it over here. Now that uh, style of playing is very prevalent in worship music. It's number one, a tone like that is going to cut through the mix, so it's going to add some grit and some texture to the overall sound. Number two, the rhythmic content of what I'm playing there drives the song, but it's also got some rhythmic interest there because of the way that I'm playing the accents. And then finally, I am paying close attention to the actual chords which means I'm also outlining the harmony. So though that's kind of a winning combination. Now the simplest form in which you can play a progression like that is literally just to use all downstrokes when you play an eighth note rhythm pattern. All right, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and very simple, no accents, just all notes sound the same. If I do that, it's gonna sound like this. And that sounds cool if you're a brand new beginner and you want to start learning to play a rhythm guitar well. Just take an eighth note pattern like that, find some two note kind of chord voicings. Don't play all the chords, all the strings together because it's not going to sound very good like that. You want to find these little voicings 
like the similar to the ones I've just shown you today and just play down, 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 down. And then what you want to aim for there is an even attack across all of those notes. And if you can, play it with a backing track or play it with a metronome so you have something to kind of judge your timing. Because if you can do that eighth note pattern well, then you are going to be able to develop your time when you practice that with a metronome or a track. Now, if you think about a drummer, that's essentially what they're doing with a hi-hat is they're playing those hi-hats with an eighth note pattern. All right, that's very standard when you're playing in a 4-4 four, four style rhythm. But sometimes that's exactly what a song asks for, but sometimes it can be a little boring. And what drummers will do is they'll play that eighth note pattern on the hats, but they'll play some very strategically placed accents in order to bring that part to life. Now you can do the same. And I'm gonna show you two, let's say three ways in which you can play an accented part like this. The first way, as you can see on the screen right now, is just a straight eighth note pattern, no accents. The second one is we can see that there's an accent on beat one and an accent on the end of two. That means one and the end of two, those are gonna be played slightly louder. You can take those same chords and add in that accent all right so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then listen to the difference here i'll play for you on the higher notes it's going to sound like this So that's placing an accent on one and the and of two. How about adding another accent on that on beat four? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, that's known as a clave, which is all over rock music and just modern Western music as we know it. it comes it has its its roots in Latin music, but that's a, a lesson for another day. But let's check out this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now the third accented pattern I'm going to show you right now that actually spans two bars. So it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right, that's kind of cool because now uh, the fact that it's over two bars just gives me even more rhythmic interest and it's not as repetitive as a one bar phrase. So let me play that for you right now. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, that sounds kind of cool, right? But as we know, it's a two bar rhythmic pattern, right? But I've got, there's a chord change that happens from bar one to two, two to three and three to four. So now I'm going to play one rhythmic pattern to cover two chords. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. So if you're a beginner guitarist, go and check out these four patterns I've just shown you. Eighth notes, consistent eighth notes without any accents, or eighth notes with the accents on one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The third pattern was one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. In the fourth pattern, we had a two bar phrase, which was 
one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and very very useful patterns these and if you add in the right chord voicings dial up the right tone then you are going to be in good standing there because you're going to be able to drive forward the song add in some um, uh, harmonic and melodic interest and add some grit to the sound if you're using a slightly or a very overdriven sound like i'm using right now and these things also apply to single notes. So you can do this on a single note line as well. Uh, we won't get into that right now. There's something for another day, but I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you're a beginner, go and take some basic chord progressions and go experiment with these four different patterns. Now, if you'd like to get access to a cool backing track that you can use along with uh, these approaches that I've just shown you, then I'd encourage you to sign up for our seven day Worship Guitar Challenge, where I cover 15 different types of guitar parts. Right now, I've only shown you one with four variations, but we've actually got a challenge that runs over seven days where I give you a backing track to jam with, and I give you tabbed examples where you can learn 15 different guitar parts, and a lot of those are really focused around rhythm, if that's what you want to learn. And we also check out ambient voicings, open and closed triads, octaves, power chords, uh, motifs. Uh, there's a bunch of great stuff in there that'll keep you busy if you want to go ahead and improve your guitar playing and you know find a way to develop your own voice on the guitar. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoy this and I hope you go ahead and sign up for the seven day guitar challenge by clicking the link in the description box. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the challenge.